Hello, I'm Brian Mandelson, a plastic surgeon from Melbourne, and it's a pleasure to be here today to talk with you. So the difference between a, a high quality facelift and an ordinary facelift, there are several components. One is, and the most important overall thing, is that it doesn't look as though the person's had a facelift, they just look fresh, well for their age. And that's not so easy to obtain because uh, there is a tendency to overdo pulling, for example. So the public think they can always pick a facelift. But the reality is uh, nearly all the patients that I do a facelift uh, on will say, you know what, no one has picked that I've had the facelift. But there's, and I'll say, well, do they give you a compliment? Oh, they all say I'm looking well. And that's really the best compliment you can have. Now, there are cultural differences in different parts of the world. So, for example, in Los Angeles, if no one picked you had a facelift, you would feel like you didn't get a good result. Or Brazil, for example. But in, in more sophisticated areas, or culturally sophisticated, there's not the, the want to be seen to have had a facelift, which is a status symbol. For, for us, it's a, like a stigma. So then you look at what is it about the face that's detectable. Well, disproportionate tightness in certain areas, the, the windswept look, which a good facelift just doesn't do. Visible deformities like pulling ear lobes is a classic thing, or the neck underdone for the rest of the face, or even overdone. Like in California, some surgeons tighten the neck uh, more than is natural for someone with a certain age. Because usually you, with a, a good face, you're going to turn the age back eight to 10 years for someone in their late 40s or 50s, not someone in their 30s, otherwise they'd be looking like an infant. <laughs> there. Now, the, the other thing with patients uh, worry, how do I know you're not going to uh, unintentionally pull too tight? And the, the way to describe that is it's to do with the technique of surgery. So if the surgeon uh, lifts the skin and pulls the skin tight, uh, it's like pulling a piece of elastic. And so uh, you tend to thin the skin and pulling it tight often is necessary to get a, a good and lasting result. But the more anatomically correct way of doing the surgery is to tighten the support layer. So, which is the function of the support layer is to support the skin. So if you take the laxity out of the support layer, the skin will look toned rather than stretched. And using that technique of surgery, it's really impossible to be overdone there. So you do not have to worry about the windswept look. I give the analogy, it's like laxity of a chain, you know, a chain necklace. Uh, you tighten it until there's no more laxity and there's no point in tightening it anymore. The key question is what causes the aging process because it's a universal thing amongst all humans we can always wondering about people's age whereas if you're an animal like your dog the only way you can tell a dog's age is by its behavior if it's acting like a puppy or an older dog it may be some gray hairs but it doesn't have the expression on the face of looking tired as humans get with aging so the question is what causes it and discounting skin aging which is environmental factors like sun and other factors like that but there's a loss of the bone structure on the face we didn't realize that until more recent years particularly the bone around here and uh, maybe some there a little bit along the jaw so as soon as you lose volume on the face uh, the tissues are less tight so if someone loses weight, particularly if you notice it in someone at a young age, they just don't look quite the same. And then once there's lost less volume, uh, there the, tends to be a bit of sag. And then when you move the muscles on your face with expression, you'll see uh, older people when they smile, the smile lines are so many more than there used to be, because what's happened with the sag, say the top of the cheek is sitting a bit lower, so they, when they start smiling, instead of smiling from there up, they're smiling up there, the aging, before they start the smile lines. So restoring volume is important. And as some people have fillers, as, you, as we all know, and people who have not lost very much volume yet, a little bit of filler is beneficial. But unfortunately, uh, with more aging, the fillers become less satisfying and less effective. So the the loss of volume is partly the bone and partly 
uh, the soft tissue as well. But then sometimes the loss of volume is come from the sag because with the, the thicker tissue dropping down, it's ending up lower down on the face and therefore it's thinner up here. So there's a vicious cycle tends to occur, perpetuate with uh, more movement, more loss of volume, more thinning of the tissues. So obviously the key to surgery is restoring uh, the structures to the correct position on the face, restoring the volume of the bone of the face and restoring the volume of the soft tissue. And then it looks natural. So um, it's a great cause of anxiety for many people about first day back at work um, because they're so worried it's going to be detected and but if they prepare for that which firstly is having sufficient time so I would always encourage someone to put off the surgery till they have the time so that they can enjoy the recovery because the recovery enjoyment or how you feel about it is to, going to determine your satisfaction with the whole process you see so if the facelift experience was a good one you'll always be happy about your appearance rather than you have to struggle because you didn't have enough time and if you only had three weeks off well two and a half weeks after surgery you could be looking in front of the mirror and thinking how on earth in three days is this going to look natural very important yeah so um, because the after afterwards is so important and people uh, can't really discuss this with family members particularly husbands um, they really need a good support network and because they're not going out to coffee with their girlfriends and others um, they haven't got the normal chance to communicate and be part of the world so in the office we've got outstanding staff who really love what they do in, in supporting people so the nurses uh, are out, really outstanding I'm always being told never let her go and then we also we have the physiotherapist Joan who who does lymphatic drainage and ultrasound she's been with me for 30 years she's so she's wonderful but also she's experienced so she knows what people are going through and they can chat and then we have the skin care specialist Natasha who's all just put the hands on the face because people for weeks haven't been able to do that and just to have knowing someone else is doing it really helps and then we have the heal light which is LED light that speeds up the rate of healing it's nice to know everything is working to support you rather than you having to look out for your own needs which is tends to be what happened when people uh, have surgery in overseas places and they're staying in a hotel and they're told to come back next week and it's too much they need constant support so I hope th uh, this information is helpful to people who uh, were concerned because they didn't know enough about it and had preconceived ideas that might have been incorrect that was discouraging them. But information is really important to have the information because so much of the fear is because of misinformation. So we have outstanding patient uh, advisors in the office and people are most welcome to call the, my, my office and come along and speak with the patient advisor which we don't charge for that. It's a complimentary service because that will help people know whether it's right for them. They can ask questions that they may be a little embarrassed to ask the surgeon. Uh, so just a nice to know and be reassured. And then if, if the, the patient advisor, Gilda or Jennifer, uh, feels that uh, they can help, and they're often they'll expedite the patient to come to see me a little sooner because they get priority care. Yeah. So thank you so much, Chris. Thank you.